Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Phil and Dave's Excellent Adventures. Just Dave here. Today, I'm talking about the movie Women Talking. This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you are concerned about spoilers, I would suggest you go and watch the movie first before you watch this review. So Women Talking is a movie based on a true story about um, a group of women in uh, Bolivia, I believe, uh, although in this case, it's not necessarily set in Bolivia, but a group of women in a small religious community who were sexually assaulted and um, sort of the repercussions of that and what they decide to do um, moving forward. So as far as what I liked about the movie, overall, the cast is amazing. Uh, Rooney Mara as Ona was great. I loved Claire Foy as Salome. So I don't know if I'm saying the names right. Uh, Jesse Buckley as Marish, Marish and uh, Ben Wisha as August. All of them, great performances, great throughout. Um, I really like the kids. Uh, Kate Hallett, uh, Liv McNeil, and Michelle McLeod played the kids. They were all great. Uh, the older women in here in particular, also really good. Uh, Judith Ivey as Agatha and Sheila McCarthy as Greta. Both both great performances. Uh, Frances McDormand is in here as well. Not much, though, just, just briefly. Um, but also, I mean, Frances McDormand, always good. A very commanding presence. Um, I really appreciated the performances of the older women, in particular Judith Ivey and Sheila McCarthy, because um, there's just there's very different characters. So Ag Agatha is this very kind of quiet, um, reserved character who loves her horses. But when she speaks, she still, she really commands the room. And then Sheila McCarthy, Greta is, is sort of the opposite. She's kind of a big bombastic character, but the same thing. And just watching and appreciating these two women's performances and seeing how they both are able to really command the room, but in very different styles and in very different ways. And also just seeing older women having like good meaty roles, you don't see it that much anymore. So it's always good to see. And I appreciate sort a similar thing between like Ona and uh, Salome, Salome, uh, where, where again, just one very loud and, and, you know, in your face and bombastic, the other kind of more reserved and quiet, but also kind of interesting uh, and contemplative. I really, really like that. Um, I really like that there is a portrayal of a trans character in this. Uh, August Winter plays the character Melvin. Um, even though, you know, I don't know necessarily, it, it seems like maybe it wasn't uh, entirely accurate or, or believable, but it's still, I always like to see stuff like that. And I think it was handled well. Um, I, I thought the performances, like I said, again, throughout very good and, and very different, uh, varied throughout. Th so I really appreciated that. I thought the opening was very effective. Uh, it opens with a woman um, laying in bed and there's there's blood uh, all over the inside of her, her legs. And uh, there's this voiceover of the young girl sort of explaining, talking to uh, a child that has not been born yet, I believe. Very, 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 uh, very effective. Very, very uh, visceral kind of image that really grips you. And you're like, oh, my God, what is happening here? Why? Why is that? And I think maybe as, as a man, it's a little more um, effective to me or maybe for some less. But, yeah, it, it very much struck me and, and stuck with me. Um, I like that that they sort of say something along the lines of this is a story of wild female imagination, although that confused me a little bit because I thought that meant this was not based on a true story, but it, it certainly is. That's actually what the, the elders in this uh, religious community said when uh, these accusations came forth. It was a wild female imagination. Um, I love the direction of this. It, it's, it's really, really well directed. Uh, it, it looks great. The cinematography also really, really great. There's some awesome scenes where they're like in a barn and, and the shadows are kind of coming along through the rafters and, and through the slats and you can kind of see them reflected and it just it looks really good and it looks really great honestly most of the movie takes place in this one barn there's a few shots outside and a few other things but it, it's all this one location this one area and um it, it really worked for me it, it, it looks great it, it sounds great the music and the score by hilder guten's daughter guten daughter uh also great. I really, really liked it. Uh, the one song that we do hear in this is uh, The Monkey's Daydream Believer, which I love The Monkey's. I'm a big fan. So it was nice when it popped up. I wasn't sure if it was diegetic or not at first, but then uh, luckily August started singing along and I realized, okay, yeah, it, it is. They can hear it too. It's not just me. Uh, that was cool. I like that there's really not any men in this movie. There's Ben Wishaw's August and there's some little boys. And we do see um, uh, Marisha's husband, uh, kind of. We don't even really see his face, though. Uh, not not that well. But that's about it. Other than that, it's mostly all on the census taker, but it's mostly all women. And I really I, I like that. It, it's refreshing and, and interesting to see a movie where, you know, you're so used to seeing men all the time, seeing a bunch of women and doing a really, really good job. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, I thought the makeup in this movie was really great. You know, it's kind of a quiet movie. There's not a lot of special effects or anything like that. But uh, Marisha's face after her husband beats her is 
it looks really, really good. And it's a kind of subtle thing, you know, it's easy to, to not really notice or take for granted. But like, as she's sitting there talking, and you see her, you know, swollen cheekbone, and you see her eye just slightly off as she's explaining what happened, it's heartbreaking and, and terrible and, and very effective. And it really worked. Um, I enjoyed the philosophical debates. I, I, for whatever reason, I, I, I love movies where it's just people sitting in a room talking. <laughs> They're discussing philosophy or politics even better, you know, like for whatever reason, that is just fascinating to me. I would much rather watch that than watch, you know, guys punching each other all day or, or whatever, whatever else there is out there. Uh, I do like that that very quickly they they started started talking about the accountability of the elders and of the institution itself, um, because I, I feel like sometimes it takes people a while to, to, to get to that point. And they kind of quickly were like, hey, you know. I don't know if I agree with them 100%, but one of them said, you know, it's not, we can't really blame these boys. It's not their fault. It, it's sort of the fault of the system that they grew up in. Um, I don't know if I necessarily 100% agree with that, but I, I did appreciate that they they held the system, you know, accountable. And I even appreciate that at one point, Agata told, holds herself accountable because she admits, like, I think it was Marish or, or I believe it was Marish. Uh, she had come to her in the past about her husband um, uh, abusing her and she sort of told her to to forgive him and, and and to move on and to not do anything about it and so i like that she admitted to her mistake and she she owned up to it that was nice um i i hate to say it but i i like the subject matter i, I don't i hate the subject matter but it, it, it i like that it's interesting I, I like that it 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 was something that made me think i like that it's something that stuck with me i i think I don't know. I, I, there was something uh, I read online where it was like, you know, I like kids movies because they're fun and about fantasies where you got to do cool things. Whereas grown up movies are just about cheating on your spouse. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. But this is a movie where it's not. It's actually about something much more important and much more difficult. And uh, I, I did appreciate that. I also appreciated the humor in this. There's not a lot. And obviously, there, too much humor <laughs> would, would not be a good thing. But there are moments of humor and they really, really work well. There's a part where Ona says, uh, very uh, um, uh, matter of fact, that we should just kill the men. Um, and then there's this, this hesitation between whatever it starts laughing. And it's, it's really, really very funny, the, the sort of a, a deadpan way that she delivered the line. And then there's another part where I believe it's Greta uh, that's talking about how uh, they just had never asked men for anything uh, all this time. And that it's funny that the first thing they ask them for is for them to leave. Um, and again, they start laughing and it's funny and even August starts laughing. And I think it's partially because it's such a serious movie and it's such heavy subject content uh, that when these moments of levity do come up, it, it's it's really nice. Uh, it's, it's really appreciated. Um, I like the drawings uh, that, that were done throughout. I always like drawings. Um, and, and I like that. Uh, I like the kids, too. I like the way the kids are portrayed, the way that they're kind of joking around and they're saying they're bored and like they don't really care, even though they do. And I think those girls were also um, assaulted, and I believe. So but it, it it struck me as very true, the way that kids are about stuff and the way that kids can kind of uh, not really care about stuff or kind of get over. It. And I'm sure later, maybe they would think about it more, but um, yeah, I just really appreciated the kids' performances. And I really liked seeing them. Um, and I, I really liked that this is just a very sad, depressing, but also very beautiful movie. Um, and it made me cry all the time, like a lot. Uh, j there was a point where I, I just, you know, I'm laying in the chair and my entire neck was just soaked with tears um, because it is very, very difficult to watch. And, and the women and the portrayals, their performances are just extraordinary. And I think uh, probably my favorite was Claire Foy as uh, Salome, just because she she's so intense. And she's just, there's a scene where, where she says something along the lines of like, if anyone tries to take my, my baby or hurt my baby, I will kill them and I will fight God. And just anything that's about fighting God and like standing up, just I always love that. It's great. She's got at least two really awesome speeches where she's just like, I don't give, I don't care what anyone says. I will kill everyone in this room. And I'm like, yes, it's awesome. It's great. Um, so yeah, re really, really good. Really, really fun. Um, as far as what I disliked about it, <laughs> there's not much. This movie, this is a really, really good movie. Um, you could argue maybe it's a little too melodramatic uh, at times and maybe a little too over the top, uh, but I mean, this kind of stuff happens. So uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the the <laughs> I say this mostly as a joke, but there's a little boy who got like a seed stuck in his nose. Could have been better. <laughs> but also just because it's such a big, serious movie, all of a sudden this little kid comes up and I'm like, 
Let me tell you, acting kid, <laughs> go back to acting school. Uh, but I mostly say that just a joke. He was a very young kid, and, and so you know, um, there, there's a little bit of the long lingering shots, which I, I always complain about. But actually, in this movie, they really kind of worked. You know, if you've got this shot of a, a woman just kind of staring off into the the distance while you show this scenery, yeah, it works because she's thinking about very heavy, very important, you know, emotional stuff. Um, so yeah uh you could maybe argue the movie's a little long again i'm just nitpicking here because I, I, I don't think it was uh when the movie ended i actually still wanted more because it ends with them you know leaving um but but i wanted to know what happened to them when they left you know and uh, the other thing is I, I i do wish that august could have come with them uh, i i understand why he didn't uh, i think uh they didn't want any of the men to come with them and there's debate over what age the cutoff was for the boys but uh as far as i know august you know, didn't do anything wrong. He, he seemed like a decent up. And actually, I didn't entirely understand the August character. At first, I thought maybe he was somehow mentally deficient or something. Uh, but he seemed he'd gone to college. He knew how to read and write. But but he seemed maybe emotionally stunted or somehow on the spectrum. Or I guess I'm not really sure. And I didn't necessarily really understand August and Ona's relationship either. It, it seemed that they had feelings for each other and they liked each other, but she didn't want to be with him because because it would ruin his idea of her or something I, I i didn't i didn't quite understand what was going on there and and and, and it's probably just me uh being dumb uh, and again I, I like a happy ending sometimes even though it's a very serious movie it would be nice if august could have come with them um when they left and i'm sure there's a good reason they didn't and i'm just dumb but yeah uh, other than that the movie is uh directed by sarah polly um who's an actress uh, and a director uh this is the first thing i've seen of hers it, it, it's funny uh, i get her confused with sarah paulson a lot so for whatever reason when i heard sarah paulson i'm like wait is that the girl from uh the the dawn of the dead remake or is that the the woman from the american horror story thing and as i'm watching I'm like okay this got to be sarah paulson from american horror story and admittedly because i'm kind of dumb i thought that Cla claire foy was sarah paulson and i actually thought Rooney mara was uh saoirse ronan and i think i thought jesse jesse buckley was Maura Tierney, which I'm like, yeah, Maura Tierney looks great for her age, but basically I didn't know what was going on the whole time. So I thought she had actually written this role or she, she was playing this character herself. And I'm like, that's a little indulgent, but no, this is Sarah Polly, different person, an actress, also director. She's directed quite a few movies, but this is the first one I've seen. She did Take This Waltz, uh, Stories We Tell. Uh, I haven't seen those, but uh, it was written by Polly and Miriam Toes and it was based on the book by Miriam Toes. And I will say there was definitely a point where I realized, oh, this whole thing takes place in, in a barn. This is either based on well the narration hinted me that it was based on a book but i also thought this is almost like a play it's almost like a, it's a play set in one one room you know it's easy to do uh it is based on a true story uh, of a religious community in bolivia um and i guess what i don't understand is as far as a true story and maybe i could have looked this up but uh it is based on a true story the, these assaults happened the women brought him up the elder said it was you know just an act of um female imagination but what I don't know is, did the women actually leave the group in real life? Or is that something that they came up with for the movie? And um, even though in the movie, like I said, in real life, it happened in Bolivia. Here, they're speaking English with maybe a Canadian accent. But then there's a part where August shows her how to find the Southern Cross. The Southern Cross is mostly only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. So is this supposed to be in Bolivia? Is this supposed to be in America? Is this supposed to be in Canada? Like, I, I, I was a little confused about that. Um, and I was a, a little surprised, I guess, in the movie set in 2010, because, you know, watching it, I didn't really know in the way they dress. It could be set, you know, in any time period for the last 100 years or so. And then when the guy starts driving around, A, playing the Adrian Believer, but then talking about the 2010 census, I go, oh, okay. You know, that's right. Uh, in the movie, the, the women are supposed to be Mennonite, I believe, which is a branch uh, or similar to um, Amish people, but you know, slightly less restrictive, from what I understand. And uh, in the movie, they, they can't read and write, and which is why August is there. But in real life, Mennonite women are literate. They they read and write. They teach. That's actually part of their religion is to teach other people how to read and write. So I don't understand why they did that. Um, I don't, I assume they weren't Mennonite in real life because I don't think there are Mennonites in Bolivia. I, I think it's mostly like an American thing, but I, I don't know. Maybe there are. Um, I, I didn't, uh, and again, as much as I, I liked the appreciation, I appreciated the representation of trans characters with Melvin. Um, I, I feel like I, I don't know if, if Mennonites would allow uh, that. I feel like if if Melvin were to start dressing like a man and and, and change her, their name, then they they would no longer be part. Now, granted, this had just happened, and, and maybe with everything else going on, they didn't have time for this. But uh, it, it did seem a little bit like, as much as I like 
inclusion, it seemed a little bit like maybe it was forced, or maybe they just shouldn't have made these people men tonight. Um, I also wondered August as much as I liked the character. I was almost waiting for for something bad to be revealed about August that he somehow um, also did this, or that he knew and, and, and didn't do anything about it. And I mean, did he know? It, it seems like he should have known, or he should have at least had an, an idea. And so, if so why didn't he? Do, I, I guess I still don't really understand the August character that much. Um, the movie was released by Orion Pictures, which I only point out because I didn't know they were still a thing. And uh, I actually really like their logo. Their logo is this very bright, colorful, kind of beautiful thing. And I'm like, well, what's going on here? All right, Orion. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. And then the rest of the movie is very saturated and almost black and white, and like not a lot of color, which makes sense for the movie. But uh, yeah, it was funny to see Orion Pictures. It was also, uh, Orion is a branch of MGM. Um, and this is MGM's first Best Picture nominee since Silence of the Lambs in 1990, 91. So good for them. Um, I did notice the movie was uh, produced by Brad Pitt's Plan B company, which I only point out because currently there's stuff going on with Brad Pitt. Uh, I believe Angelina Jolie uh, has said that he, he hit her at some point, and I believe the kids have also corroborated that. So it, it does seem a little hypocritical that the movie is produced by a guy who has been accused of, of um, abusing a woman. Again, you know, I don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't there, but uh, just something I'd point out. Um, and then also, just to point out, I guess, the fact that I'm dumb. For some reason, I thought this movie, Women Talking, was like about Harvey Weinstein or about like modern day kind of Hollywood type stuff. I didn't realize that it was what it was until I went to see the movie. And I think maybe I just confused it with like Bombshell or with some of the other stuff going on there. But um, I only point that out just to... Uh, just to say how stupid I am, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, other than that, uh, the movie's great. Honestly, it's it's probably the second best movie of the year. Uh, I think I still liked, uh, well, I, I don't mean to compare it, but uh, yeah, I think it's great. It, it's honestly borderline 10, but I think I'm going to give it a nine out of 10 as far as my score goes. Um, just a really great, hauntingly beautiful, amazing movie that I think everyone should definitely watch. That being said, there's an old guy in the theater who was there with his wife, only other people in the theater. And he kind of talked throughout the entire thing and just made a bunch of noise and stuff. and was kind of annoying. And they got up to go to the bathroom at some point and left and everything else. And uh, as I was leaving, I overheard them talking to somebody else. And uh, his wife said she really liked it. And he said, well, they didn't, they didn't spend a lot of money on that movie. And that was his review, which I guess is true. They probably didn't. <laughs> and if they did, they should have spent it on the, on the actors because they were great. But uh, you don't always need to spend a lot of money to make a good movie. So um, I don't know. I, I hope more, more people agree with me and less people agree with him. But if you saw the movie, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great night. I'll see you here again next week.